Hello everyone, and welcome to your daily dose of your spiritual vitamin ah, with me, Bonnie B. Now, still working on mind transmutation? That's what we're going to pick up at, okay? We'll jump right in this thing, excuse me for a minute. We're going to jump back in this and pick up where we left off at. Okay, and that's from the Kabbalion. We're studying from the the Kabbalion, a study of the Hermetic philosophies of ancient Greece and Egypt by the three initiates. Okay, quickly go before the throne of grace, have a little talk with Jesus, keep this thing rolling. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace because we need your help. We need you to help us with the transmutation of the mind, that we get it right. Father God, we ask your guidance, your direction, and we ask that you send the Holy Ghost in, that we may get the correct understanding for the knowledge in which we should have. Father God, we ask that you lead, point, and direct us in this endeavor, that we may rightfully divide things that are necessary. Father God, we ask you to endow us with the spiritual powers in which you have ordained us to receive. We ask that you show us the correct way of our understanding and knowledge and dividing up all materials necessary. Father, go with us. Go with me as a teacher that I may teach correctly that that you have ordained me to teach. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Let's do this. Okay, we're going to pick up right here. That which is fundamental truth, the substantial reality, is beyond true naming. But the wise men call it the all. It comes from the Kabbalion. In its essence, the all is unknowable. That too comes from the Kabbalion, as well as. But the report of reason must be hospitably received. And treated with respect. The human reason, whose report we must accept, so long as we think at all, it informs us as follows regarding the all. And that without attempting to remove the veil. Of the unknowable. One. The all. Must be all. That really is. The all. Must be. All. There really is. There can be nothing existing. Outside of the all. Else. The all. Would not be the all. Second rule is the all is infinite. For there is nothing else to define, confine, bound, limit, or restrict the all. It must be infinite in time and eternal. It must have always continually existed for there is nothing else to have ever created it and something can never evolve from nothing and if it had ever not been even for a moment it would not be now. It must continuously exist forever. For there is nothing to destroy it. And it can never not be. 
for it is infinite and eternal. Even for a moment, because something can never become nothing, it must be infinite in space. It must be everywhere, for there is no place outside of the all. It cannot be otherwise than continuous in space. Without break, cessation, separation, or interruption. For there is nothing to break separate or interrupt this continuity, its continuity, and nothing with which to fill in the gaps. It must be infinite in power or absolute. For there is nothing to limit, restrict, Restrain, confine, disturb, or condition it. It is subject to no other power. For there is no other power. The all is the all. Y'all must be immutable or not subject to change in its real nature, for there is nothing to work changes upon it, nothing into which you could change, nor from which it could have changed. Remember that all is nothing and everything. Everything that exists around you exists because of God's imagination. There was nothingness. God went back and forth in the nothingness. And the only thing God had to consult with was his wisdom. So he and wisdom got together and that's how, they, that's how this came to be. Because God became bored. How do we know these things? Enoch. See how they build upon each other? Enoch. Enoch is how we know. Enoch discusses that. The all must be immutable or not subject to change in its real nature. For there is nothing to work changes upon it into which it could change, nor from which it could have changed. It cannot be added to nor subtracted from. Increased, nor diminished, nor become greater or lesser in any respect. Who or what soever. That's a deep shit for you. It must have always been and must always remain. Just what it is now. Y'all. There has never been, is not now, nor never will be anything else into which it can change. It's the all is the all. Can't change into nothing. It's infinite. It's eternal. It takes up all space. It doesn't change into anything. It has always been. It has never not been. Wrap your mind around that. The all being infinite, absolute, eternal, and unchangeable. It must follow the anything finite, changeable, fleeting, and conditioned cannot be the all. If it is finite, 
interchangeable or conditioned. And there is nothing outside of the all in reality then any and all such finite things must be nothing in reality the matrix the matrix it's all an illusion Now, do not become fogged or frightened. I'm not trying to lead you into the Christian science field under cover of hermetic philosophy. No. No. I'm trying to get you all to see the matrix. I'm trying to get you all to wrap your mind around the the God is everywhere and nowhere. God is that thing that changes others. But in and of itself, it is finite. It takes up all space, all time. It has always existed. It has never not existed. God is the creator. There is a reconciliation of the apparent contradictory state of affairs. Be patient. We're going to reach it in time. We see around us that which is called matter. Okay? Which forms the physical foundations of all forms of life. Matter. Is the all merely matter? Not at all. Matter cannot manifest life or mind. Matter cannot manifest. And as life and mind are manifested in the universe, the all cannot be matter. For nothing rises higher than its own. Nothing is ever manifested in an effect that it is not in the cause. Nothing is evolved as a consequence that is not involved as an antecedent. And then modern science informs us that there is really no such thing as matter <laughs> that we can call matter is merely interrupted energy or force. So when you understand that God is pure energy, pure force, matter is interrupted force. Now that's something for your mind. Matter is interrupted energy or force. That is, energy or force is at a low rate of vibration. So energy and force is lower rates of vibration. The higher the rate of vibration, the 
the greater the matter. As a recent writer has said, matter has melted into mystery. Even material science has abandoned the theory of matter and now rests on the basis of energy. Because energy is pure source. Pure source. Then is the all mere energy or force? Hmm. Not energy or force. As a materialist use the term for their energy and force are blind mechanical things devoid of life or mind. Life and mind can never evolve from blind energy or force. For the reason given a moment ago, nothing can rise higher than the, than the source it has evolved from. Nothing is evolved unless it is involved. Nothing manifests in the effects unless it is the cause. And so, the all cannot be mere energy or force. For if it were, then there would be no such things as life and mind in existence. And we now know better than that. For we are alive and using mind to consider this very question. And so those who claim that energy or force is everything, what is there higher than matter or energy that we know to exist in the universe? Life and mind. Or the higher vibration energies. Life and mind in their varying degrees of unfoldment. Then you ask, do you mean to tell us that the all is life and mind? Yes and no. Is our answer. <laughs> if you mean life and mind as we poor pretty mortals know them, we say no. The all is not that. But what kind of life and mind do you mean? So you ask. The answer is the living mind. The living mind. The all is the living mind. As far above that which mortals know by those words, as life and mind are higher than mechanical forces or matter infinite living mind as compared to finite life and mind we mean such an illuminated souls they 